you would think that Dr. Doolittle is a doctor of getting animals to fuck. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yes. Welcome back to Is It Still Good? This is the show where we take our rose-colored glasses, we leave them in veterinary school because we are distressed by the fact that not only can we hear what animals are saying and thinking we can converse with them and that knowledge drives us to do horrible crazy things like try to heal them and make them join the mafia we are two film students who are grown-ups even though we hate growing up i'm bear kennedy i'm in chicago joining me from parts unknown uh, but as always andrew carter in palm springs uh, the reason I'm in Palm Springs this week is that our short film Marvin's Never Had Coffee Before is playing the Palm Springs International Short Fest. Um, it is in person. Uh, the screenings have been pretty cool so far. Excuse me. And it has been a nice and balmy 109 degrees today, I think. Um, yeah. Might, yeah, might, I think it's supposed to get up to, yeah, it's supposed to get up to like 114 while we're here, which is uh, great exercise weather. Um it just can't can't wait to go on that you know 10 mile run um however i know i have heard that you know turning up the heat really really high in your gym or whatever helps you like sweat a lot more calories and you know all that shit it's like yeah. brick room well, yoga hot course, yoga you can, exactly and you can you can wear trash bags to facilitate that process as well <laughs> oh you no get the sweat going yeah 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 that's a tried and true method trash bags yeah. you know eat nothing but bubble gum and water this is all helpful he- healthy this has been the health corner is what i'm trying to say on the show yeah this surprise guys this episode's about uh health it, and it's <laughs> it's about losing weight and, and the right way to do it which is with you know a hefty bag a pack of juicy fruit and a gallon of water oh my god um that is what a what a concept um but anyways guys we are here bringing you another counter programming episode of the 2001 summer movie season um so as many of you know one of the films that we're going to discuss turned 20 this week and it got articles people were talking about it and its ninth sequel hits theaters as you're listening to this today it hits theaters right now um and the other one was actually a sequel at the time that it came out and no one is talking about it anymore and there's a pretty good reason for it and we'll get into that one first but this episode is covering dr doolittle 2 and the fast and the furious these movies opened on the same day june 22nd 2001 and i remember thinking oh dr doolittle 2 it's a sequel the first one was a big hit it's gonna crush the box office and boy was i wrong at age 12 i remember it was the first box office surprise that i like understood you know being like oh wow it it it, like the movie that people thought was going to be number one wasn't and i think and i think as as the release dates grew closer tracking for the fast and the furious was going up and so it was looking like it was going to be a surprise number one um but I just remember being kind of, you know, stuck in the the standard, oh, it's a sequel. Sequels do well. It's going to, because, like, The Mummy Returns had just come out, and, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that it's a it's a sequel. Like, a second movie, it's going to do much better. Um, and I was wrong. It still crossed $100 million. Uh, it ended at about 112 domestic. It opened to 25. Um, but there's a reason why people don't remember this movie. Um, because it is god fucking awful, and the Doctor Doolittle too. Yeah, and not only that, it is. While I was watching it, and I have a confession which I'll get to. Um, while I was watching it, I was like, "This movie has no voice, no point of view, no." It, it felt like there was no passion. It was the prime <laughs> example of studio engineered product just to make money which there's nothing wrong with having that in there as long as the movie's good but my god this wasn't one of those movies and i am here to admit for the first time ever on this show i did not finish 
the movie. <laughs> you fucker. I'm what? sorry. I didn't. I couldn't do it. I. Do- <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I I got halfway through and I couldn't. I couldn't do it. When it, did you stop? What was the last? What was there a breaking point? Was there like a just a just a bridge way too far for you? It was right as they were trying to um, teach him about hibernating. Okay. And and he said I forget, there was some like. I forget some. What he's talking about eating all the dirt and everything to get that plug going in his butt. Yeah, yeah, some stupid butt joke, scatological like butt joke. joke. And I was like, oh, I've had it. Like, you know, I've I've been through enough. And the Too weird thing is, talk. yeah. And the weird thing is, is like, the plot of it is not terrible. Of like, he's got to save the forest by getting these two bears together. I'm like, that's kind of creative and funny, but it just like everything about it just it felt forced it felt inorganic and again it it was just i was watching it and i was like wow who is this i'm surprised that it made over 100 million dollars clearly i'm missing something but there's a part of me that was like who is this movie for like at least the first one and i watched the first one too the first one your, okay that was my question is what is your relationship with the first film because i haven't seen the first movie in so long i was basically watching the second movie blind right time. okay so the first movie i loved it as a kid i got i had the vhs tape oh and i watched the first one again and it definitely yeah there's definitely some eye rolling moments but like i feel like i think i thought eddie murphy was great in it i i thought he he had such a good job he did such a good job of like obviously playing it for real and playing like what the hell is happening to me uh for real at, but at the same time i thought it actually explored some good themes with him and his younger daughter of like, you know, be who you are. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be, you know, quote unquote weird or whatever. And that's just not really here in this one. And I know there's stuff with the older daughter now, but like it it didn't hit quite as hard as the other one. Um, And obviously, yeah, there's silly, stupid stuff in the first one. But there's there's an edge to it. It was I mean it was PG thirteen and this one was PG. Like I, I don't okay. know. I didn't, I, I, I didn't know that. I didn't. And I that this one I was I well, did some reading different. and I yeah I did do some reading and I didn't find anything that said like and the studio changed it in post production or anything. But I remember when it came out, I noticed like oh this one's PG and the first one's PG thirteen. I wonder why that is. I, and yeah, I, guess, I don't wonder now having seen it. I get it, but I I, I would have thought right. the first one would have also been PG. I didn't realize they were no PG. first one was PG thirteen, yeah. and, and I and I there are genuine moments that I'm like I thought that was pretty clever, like like you know Gary Shandling as a oh god what is Gary Shandling in it? He's I forget, but it's like a it's, I think it's a pigeon. I think he's a pigeon with uh, with Nancy Cartwright, Marge from The Simpsons, and like they're yeah. playing a couple in like pi- like couples therapy, but they're pigeons. And then there's, you know, Norm MacDonald as the dog Lucky, who's back in this one. And then there's Chris Rock as uh, Rodney the guinea pig in the first one. It's like, they had a great voice cast. And they and again, they had, like, clever stuff with the animals. I felt like the animals were clever. And this one, it felt like the animals were only there to say topical things. Like, that stupid fucking lizard kept saying, like, use the force. And it's like, shut up. Like, it just, it, again, it just, it felt like it was, yeah, studio engineered bullshit product and i hated it and i shut it off and maybe I, i'll finish it i'm very disappointed that you shut it off i know I'm I'm, I'm 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 very upset about that i'm sorry but i would rather be honest about it with you than it'd be funny if you lied for like half the show but i i get it it would be it would be funny but like you deserve better than that i, I really the do o- <laughs> the only reason the only reason why i i'm sorry that i shut it off is for you not for me i'm yeah. sorry for you because you sat through it all I did. And and we're gonna discuss it. And I feel like I I, I apologize if that dis if that disrespects you. If you feel disrespected, <laughs> let me know because that's valid. And I'm sorry. No, I, I don't. I just I well when I put it on and it's both of these masterworks are streaming on HBO Max right now. But yeah, they're both on HBO Max. How about that? Yeah. When I saw the runtime, I saw it was 87 minutes. The first thing I wrote down is this is gonna be the longest 87 minutes of my life. <laughs> And then, That's how I felt. <laughs> well, I was treated immediately. Um, I, I I completely forgot everything about this other than he can talk to animals. Did and you see this I, in theaters? Because I saw it in theaters. I remember I, I saw no, it before. 
Fast and Furious. I have no memory of seeing this in theaters. I, I am pretty sure I saw this on an airplane. I, I, that makes for sense. For some reason, I'm, I'm very sure that this was like an airplane watch on some kind of domestic flight. But I... Not an international flight. A domestic flight. No, no, no. This is domestic only. But I... <laughs> I forgot the the plot. The only thing I remember about the first one is, I think the climactic medical occurrence is that one of the animals has gas, and he's yeah, like, the, it's just the rats. Gas. Yeah, the rats are farting, and he has Got to perform it. CPR on a rat. Yeah. Okay, I remember that, and that's about it. So immediately, I was like, I'm gonna fucking hate this movie, and then I, I was treated to Norm very obviously because Norm Macdonald can't act, so it's clearly norm doing the narration i was like all right maybe this is gonna be great i love norm this is kind of funny he's he's narrating and then i you know it's revealed that he's the dog for those of us who who forgot so that that was a strong start i thought the start of this movie wasn't bad i thought there were some good jokes i thought that the the aa joke was very funny with the the stray dogs i I thought that was hilarious i thought that it, it had a good pace of jokes in the beginning, at least in that first opening montage, kind of leading into when he he gets to his house. But uh, things things did not keep that pace up for very long, uh, at least for me. Even though I did watch the entire thing, I this it, it we've we've talked about this quite a bit uh, in the past on the show, but it is tough to engage with entertainment that's made for children it it's just hard it it is it is hard to do that and this was certainly one of those instances where this is difficult to to watch as an adult this is not an easy watch by any by any means even though you've got norm mcdonald you've got a lot of a lot of sex jokes like most of what Eddie murphy is into as a doctor is telling animals to fuck the main plot of this movie and you'd think that this would make me like it a lot more, is him getting a bear to fuck. Yeah, is, that's literally what it is. I mean, you could describe that as my life. So I was, you know, <laughs> set up for what I thought would be at least passable and was not not thrilled with the results here. And it has Kevin Pollack and sex offender Jeffrey Jones in it. There was a lot that I, I thought yeah. could have could have gone much better than it did. But Big this, sex offender Jeffrey Jones, yeah. And he always reminds me of... Gert Frobe, who played Oric Goldfinger in the movie Goldfinger, and I'm always oh I'm always yeah actually I see that same guy yeah I see that but also but Jeffrey he, Jones he's, he's only been Ferris Bueller for sure but. that's that's the only thing he's good in too I've seen him in other things and he's not good in anything else either it's, it's like he's a different ass. guy he's yeah. a different guy right um but also he's a, a piece of shit but anyway I I hear what you're saying I I hated it pretty pretty quickly. But I, 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 I hated it when I turned it on. I liked it, and then I hated it, and then I hated it more. Right. As it went on. For me, it was just the latter two for you. I hated it, and then I hated it more. <laughs> but I think I, I you know, you, you bring up an interesting point about, like, having Norm there being like, okay, that's kind of interesting. And That's, and that's maybe, kind of enough. It's like, all right, we got Norm. Yeah. Uh, that'll, is, it's probably going to be all right. Yeah, that'll be maybe that'll be fun that we got Norm and you know he's but that's the thing is in the first in the first one there's there's a lot more Norm first of all and second of all there's again more edge like there's there are good jokes about like dogs getting neutered like the German Shepherd getting dragged into the office and he's like don't fix me I swear I won't ever look at another female ever and like you know and then Norm and then Norm has to get like a hand up his butt or something like that and like. I don't know. I think there's just as silly and, um, you know, dis- quote unquote disposable as the first one is. It has a reason to exist, and it's funny, and it actually has something to say about embracing being who you are and embracing what makes you different. And this one had none of that. And on top of it, you said that it's difficult to enjoy entertainment that's strictly for kids. I agree with you, and that's that is what this was on paper. But in 2001, and this is a movie we just discussed, I mean, Entertainment for Kids, Shrek's right playing at the fucking next, yeah. that the screen next door, and it's, it's much better. Like, I just and, feel like and, there's a, yeah, yeah. There's a and lot Eddie of Murphy's stuff. Murphy's amazing in Shrek. He's not, he's yeah. not great in this. No, he's, he's fucking, he's phoning it in. Like, and I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not like 
judging him for it. I mean, he probably got paid quite a lot of money. But I think when you're talking about, oh, it's tough to enjoy entertainment for kids, I agree with... That's strictly for kids. I agree with you, and that's what this was. But I, but that's why I was watching it being like, who is this even for? Because if we're saying that this is kids' entertainment, I can name you several movies that are out there for kids, like, at this time, that were better. Well, it's falling into a weird so, thing where it, it is... It's a kids' movie. The structure of it is not difficult to follow. The stakes are extremely obvious. There's nothing very interesting cinematically happening. But at the same time, with no added context, you would think that Dr. Doolittle is a doctor of getting animals to fuck. Like that like yeah. the majority of his time, not even in the main plot with the bears, he's like talking turtles into fucking. He's yeah. he's doing there's a lot of him just you know, telling animals, hey, have you tried fucking? And yeah. I, that's clearly aimed at adults, which I think is... And that's fu- uh, that actually is funny on paper. Again, it's like sure. treating animals, you know, issues like human issues, which is what I think the first one did a lot better than this one. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of the genius of the concept, as well as, you know, because, I mean, if you really break down human nature and the human condition and human issues a lot of it does come back to sex let's I mean, fuck. Yeah, so let's sure. let's let's fuck and let's get this you know like let, let's let's uh let's stop worrying about what we're worrying about and and you know yeah. let's just let's hop well, on the good foot and do the bad thing as austin powers would say <laughs> i mean i right right away we got some what i would say you know personally are some offensive italian american stereotypes oh yeah from, the mob from, stuff and and also we, it wasn't funny. It's not funny, first off, because those kind of harmful slander against Italians is never funny. But also because Michael Rappaport sucks, and he's doing a bad accent, and he yeah, already he's has not. a bad accent. And he's a weird guy who is bad, who is actually pretty likely to hear this show and then send us a death threat. So I'm excited about that. But he, I like Michael Rappaport. You don't like him? I mean, I, I agree. I don't think he's very good in this movie, but I, 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 I think he's... I think he's funny. I think he he always comes off to me like he just did so much cocaine and cannot stop thinking about a tribe called Quest. Like everything I've true. ever heard him in is him just rambling about tribe. But so that's true. He's just he's so, a big rambler and a well, shit talker. A of, yeah. Well, a, a lot of the the humor in this is just referential, like you said. Like, do you kids know that all Italian people are in the mafia? Like, is that a, a right. thing that children know? I, I don't know. It's funny if it is. It's funny, you know, at a young age we can start conditioning. You know, it's funny. I think I knew. Italian people. I think I knew, and it was probably because of bad jokes like that in movies like this. Yeah, it's pretty like reductive. It was, that's how I knew. Like I, I definitely learned about the mafia probably from like seeing somebody do this or something when I was yeah. like nine or ten, and this came out when I was twelve. So sure. So that's already in there. Um, the at the end of the movie, which you missed. The, the, one of the only good things about this movie is that the the climax involves all of the animals organizing together to pull off a general strike to force the logging right. company to not kill the forest. Yeah. And it's questionable whether or not we should be teaching kids that all Italian people are in the mafia. But it's great that we should teach kids that organized labor gets results and that socialism is good. So I had a, a good that time with that being That the, is true the message of the back part of this movie. But there is just a lot of shit that is either straight up not funny or so referential. It's just like head scratchingly bad. There's one, there's one joke I like where Raven flies away and yells nevermore. Like that's that's a good joke. (laughs) That is Uh, a good joke though. It's for anybody, for, for the listeners that's from the poem in case anybody doesn't know from the poem. Yeah. The Raven. Okay, uh, yeah, the Poe poem, the Poem. There's a yeah, Hannibal Lecter Allen joke. Poe. Okay, just making sure you know the reference. Yeah, I know the. Re- uh, all right, we're just double checking here. We're just we're going deep on Doctor Doolittle too. I know. I wanted to. All right, admit, you want to know the truth? I was saying that for myself to make sure that that it was that. It, yeah, you were that verifying it. I was I was saying it for our listeners, but I was also verifying. Like, I think I know what this is, and let me make yeah, sure because I can called, fucking edit it out. Yeah, it's called. <laughs> I, I I knew like in my head when you said that like you know like Nevermore. I was like, oh right, oh, from yes, the of course from the from, from the, the thing, poem, the thing we all understand from yeah yeah from the from the poem by Edgar Allan Poe, and I was like, 
you know, verifying, like, yeah, that's right, right? Anyway, continue. That's hilarious. There, there is a Hannibal Lecter joke, which, again, for a kid's movie, holy fuck. When yeah, a pig in, says hello, yes. Clarice. Right. That's but okay. So that's what I'm talking about. With a lot of these jokes are being it's just topical. Referential. Yeah. yeah, referential and topical. And I my issue with that is like if you if you watch something like, and I heard uh, I think it was, I think it was David Zucker or one of the Zucker brothers talking about this because Airplane turned forty last year, and someone asked him like, why do you think that movie holds up? Like, why do you think people still think it's funny forty years later? And he's like, because the jokes. And one of the things he said was because the jokes are not topical. Yeah. They're just they're just dumb silly jokes. And if yes. you think about it. I was like, holy shit, I had never heard it described that way, but that's why that movie is so groundbreaking. And, like, it's all dumb wordplay and stuff. And, like, even Scary Movie, Scary Movie, I think it's hilarious, but the jokes that are topical, like the stuff where she's, like, fighting, like, the Matrix and the buzz, the Bud Light was up, it's like, that immediately... Also in this also in this movie, they do a I know. Um, also, it's immediately dates it. And I get why studios do that i feel like they're kind of doing it less now but i can't tell if they do it less or if i know better than to ever see that's a very good that's a very good point but i feel like in the early 2000s referential and and topical humor definitely happened more um but like the best stuff in scary movie isn't topical the funniest stuff in scary movie is like you know like just the dumb shit like when carmen Electra's on the phone in the beginning and you hear like uh, (laughs) um And, you, and she's putting popcorn on, and then, like, you hear, like, and the guy's like, what's that noise? And she goes, oops, I farted. I didn't think you would hear me. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I mean, look, there's a lot funnier stuff in, in Scary Movie as well, but, like, I'm just saying, like, that's not topical. That's just I don't know. I kind of di- disagree that Scary Movie is capable of, I, and I haven't seen Scary Movie in years, but the whole premise of that movie's, reason for existence is aping other movies yeah it's, aping it's other horror direct, movies it's a direct satire so, so right, that but in itself is topical so i don't see how you can i understand what you're saying i but don't that's, see how you can separate that but to me that's the genius of it is that there's just a lot of silly dumb fucking humor in it that I, has I, nothing I to do with completely i completely disagree with this well, when was the last time I you saw it i completely disagree with this when was the last time I you saw was it probably 14 okay watch it again i i uh, I watched it the, from from the premise of the film. It's it's t- it's reference <laughs> that movie doesn't exist on its own terms. It only okay. exists on the terms of stuff that came before it. That's true, it, it, but that's I saw a scary movie before I saw Scream, and I know what you did last summer, and I still found it hilarious. Okay, but you seeing the movie outside of the order of chronology of the movies that how they came out in the history of time does not make it less of a referential movie that's fair that's true what i'm i guess what i'm maybe i should rephrase what i'm saying it's not that it's not topical it's not esoteric that's probably a better way to put it because i think multiple i I think i mean the scary movie was a huge hit i think it made like 150 million dollars it probably i think it made more than the first scream at the box office maybe even the second scream too and so I think that my my point is is that it can be it can be understood and appreciated by someone who is not well versed in those horror movies. I imagine someone who is well versed maybe would appreciate it even more. But I guess, but I, I don't I, know. Your enjoyment of it, I think, is second is not the same thing as the fact that it exists as a parody of existing. Movies. That's true. That's it, true. It has no other the the genesis of that movie as a concept is within other movies. That's true. It, That's it, it, true. It is, a, it is a referential product. Whether yeah. Whether or not you like it is different, but it's a, it, that is peak referential humor to do a, a parody right, of but something I, else that exists. But not every joke in it is referential. I think I that's... Know, but it's within the framework of a... Of, well, of a par- I, don't know. I know, I know. I, I get it, I get it, but I'm telling you, dude, watch it again. There's There are jokes in it that have nothing to do with horror, that have nothing to do with, like, the movie. It's, like, someone's putting on... There's a scene where Shannon Elizabeth is putting on lipstick, and she's like, I love this color. And Anna Ferris is like, oh my god, you guys, you should not use that. They test their products on animals. See? Look. And she pulls out a pamphlet, and it's 
a chimp with lipstick on its face. <laughs> like, and it's, it's so silly. But I, but like, that's my point is that like, that has nothing to do with anything. It's just a dumb fucking joke. And it's, but it's hilarious. So I don't know. I, I hear what you're saying, but you, I think you should watch it again. Cause clearly it's been like, you know, more, I was it 16 years. There's no yeah. way I've seen that movie in the time since I stopped having sleepovers. Like, with other <laughs> male friends. It's such a sleepover movie with your guy friends. It's so yeah. true. There's no way um, I've seen it since that. Dude, watch it again. It's hilarious. I'm telling you. It's really funny. There's definitely stuff that has not aged well, for sure. Like, there, Zoe and, and Ryan Robinson and I actually got high a couple months ago and watched it, and we're dying laughing. But there are definitely parts where we're kind of looking at each other like, oh, God. <laughs> um, but anyway... Time. Let's wrap up uh, Doctor Doolittle too. I don't know um, if you you turned it off before this happened, but there's a there's a wolf there's a there's a super B plot about Norm Macdonald courting a white wolf. I did and, the, there. I I got the start of that. And they do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression with the wolf, and I looked it up, and it is Arnold Schwarzenegger in an uncredited role. That's and, amazing. And, he do, and they do a, a like an Asa La Vista baby. But it's that level of it's of of course they're gonna fucking milk that. That's a already at that point. That's like ten years removed from T two in two thousand one. Right. Yeah. So that yeah. that's the level of of comedy we're dealing with here. I did you did you enjoy Steve Zahn? I always like Steve Zahn. Um, he sounds like he just had a serious head injury. Yeah, but I I think he's a great actor. I really do, I, and I, I think that's that. So weird. And I and I think he. And I and yeah, he's I, I think he's fine in this, but I but I think again, I, I I think everyone involved is obviously doing this for the paycheck. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that it's a little like I guess you could say depressing, but I, I don't know. Who who am I to say what? Uh, it's a, what it's a good it, movie like, to remind you that stupid people also go see the movies. Like they and actually yeah, m- many more people who don't yeah. really yeah take movie going is like a serious exercise also Dude, go to be entertained because yeah they see shit like this because it's easy i mean just this morning at one of the screenings here there was and i won't say which one or anything but like there was a short uh that played that was a comedy and the audience seemed to really dig it i didn't and a lot and it felt like every it felt like every single beat was like not surprising at least again to me this is just me yeah. I, I apologize if i sound pretentious um but it just felt like all right this is just not my style of humor but like for a general audience for a broad audience this stuff works and that's what dr do little two is yeah it, um, it, it's another movie that takes place on a sound stage <laughs> oh and you can totally tell that cabin is not they are not it, on location Awful! It is hilarious. Uh, you can bad. you can tell that the rocks are fucking styrofoam. Oh, the or, rocks look like shit, and there's like yeah. no other trees around, which right. is uh, a tell. Uh, I don't know if you read right. Ebert's review. He gave it three stars, which is upsetting. Yeah, he gave the first but, one three stars though, which I agree with. But this one, I was kind of like, really? Why three? But I remember just, when it came out, and I saw the three star review, I was like, all right. And then I remember, even as a kid. I, all I remember from seeing it as a kid, because I saw it in theaters, and all I remember was Lisa Kudrow's line when she says, I don't talk to bear pimps. And I remembered it for years as her saying, stay away from me, you bear you bear pimp. And that was clearly not what the line was. Um, but You just run around misquoting Dr. Yeah, misquoting that. I'm, I'm, I'm just ashamed of myself. Couldn't believe it. He, um, he gave it three stars, but he wrote, this is yeah. not the kind of movie that rewards deep study. So, yeah. It's not always about the stars. Yeah, um, big thumbs down for me. Big, not still good. Um, it's interesting you didn't finish it. Yeah, this movie sucks. It's bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but now I'm curious to finish it to hear Schwarzenegger. That might be it, worth it, it. It's not. It let me let me surprise you with the fact that it's not worth it. Okay, then I won't. They're not not good. Even Count, Kevin Pollock is tragically wasted here too. It's yeah, he it's has not nothing good. to do. He just sits there sipping his drink and he's like mm, kind of the goofy bad guy. And there's like it's all locked off single shots because they didn't have the technology to do a two shot with the bear and if they did any kind of camera movement you would see the rest of the set which would be bad so it's very boring to look at it's uh not good not good very not good um so let's move on to the movie that 
wiped the floor with it at the box office the same weekend 20 years ago uh fast and furious opened to 40 million dollars which was a surprise i think again i think at the time as the releases grew closer tracking was picking up but it <coughs> excuse me it made more than i think people were anticipating and yeah, it's not, probably, not bad for a movie w- where Paul Walker stars as a man who likes tuna so much that he has to do a race war. Yeah, I'll have the tuna. No crust. I st- so this is a movie that I quote a lot. Um, I quote, I'll have the tuna, no crust. I'll qu- I quote, I'm in your face. I quote, uh, why'd you bring the buster here? The buster kept me out of handcuffs. Um, you can have any brew you like as long as it's, as long a, corona. As it's a corona. I don't quote that one, but I quote other ones. Um, but this movie, yeah, keep in mind, Vin Diesel, not a movie star at the time. Paul Walker, not a movie star at the time. Jordana Brewster, Michelle Rodriguez, not a movie star. Ricky, Ted Yoon, Levine, yeah, Ted Le- huge movie star. Ted Levine, though, I lo- love him. Um, but so, if you think about it, this movie was the start of this big franchise. It's probably hard to hear this now in the context of, like, for 20 years, how big the Fast and the Furious universe and franchise has been. But... This movie cost $37 million. Universal left them alone. They didn't really know what it was going to be. And there was even talk of it going straight to video, according to the producer, Neil Moritz. Like, he was like, they didn't know what this was going to turn into. Fucking soundtrack sounds like it's going straight to video. Yeah, the music by BT. Um, But so, yeah, it's it's very, it's very, uh, it's very of its time. Let's put it that way. Oh, it it is. Um, It is terrible. It's... I don't think it's terrible. It, it's I don't of mind its time it. in a way that's somewhat interesting. It's fucking awful. You don't mind it. I don't you mind don't it. Mind I really it. don't. So when I don't the mind first, it. Fuck you. When the first fight happens, and I don't know if you know. Do you want? Do you know what the name of that song is? When they fight at Toretto's. Oh, that's what you're talking. I'm talking about the score. I'm talking about everything. The score is not good, but the the uh, the Watch Your Back song. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. How did you guess the name of that one? <laughs> yeah, I wonder how because that's literally all they fucking say. That goes on for like so long, it almost becomes a satire of itself. Yeah, that song's that, ridiculous. That I, I'll give song, you. I'll give you that. Holy shit. Yeah. That is terrible. But if there, but it's but it's iconic. Because you it's remember, whenever you hear that it's song, not, you think of that movie I, and that I moment. Did have, yeah, every time you hear that song outside of this movie, no one has ever. Great point. To that song Great point. <laughs> I no never ever, have. I no. never have. Impossible. That's so I true. I forgot about that song, and I started. That scene started ramping up, and I started hearing that song. I was like, oh. Yeah, this is terrible. I remember this song being bad, and it's, it is. And it's aged. still fucking bad. Oh, my God. Um, okay, oh. so. So yeah, and, and in other research I did, there was a ta- the movie was originally called Redline, um, and it was Love based it. off a 1998 Vibe article about street racing in New York. I meant to read the article, um, and just ran out of time. I didn't. I I I, I same thing. Um, and it again, it wasn't this thing of like I, I think in the article. I, I what I'd be curious to know of reading the article if there was like an undercover cop involved or something like that maybe it was called um, racer x the yes it was called racer x and the movie was called red line i guess for the finish line at the end of the race um but uh how they got the name the fast and the furious was neil moritz was at i forget what maybe a screening of something or, or like a, a panel and roger corman uh, an old roger corman movie <clears throat> came up called and it was called the fast and the furious and uh, I forget what that movie was about, but Neil Moritz was like, hey, Roger, can we have the rights to that title? And he was like, yeah, sure. So that's how do, they got the Do name. you know what they paid him in? <laughs> no. This isn't a joke. They paid him, Universal paid him in unused stock footage. No fucking way. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how much, but that's that's what he took, accepted payment for the for the the rights of the name i bet universal was thrilled with that oh, they were both thrilled um, that's a great deal for both of them that is true that's actually a good deal for corman too yeah what was the unused stock footage of like what's i, I couldn't say? find anything specific i just found that that yeah. according to well, the av club that's what they paid him hopefully he got good use out of it um well, definitely did yeah uh so yeah i mean here's the thing with the fast and the furious franchise it's gotten obviously bigger and more absurd as it's gone on um but you could argue that it's just for some people they love it even more and it's 
getting even like bigger in terms of its audience making even more money i think this i think f9 coming out today will be a real test in the pandemic era to see how it does um but i remember seeing this original one a couple weeks after i saw dr Doolittle 2 i was at a summer camp in new hampshire and my parents came down for like parents weekend and they took me to see it we went to a movie theater it was one of the only times that we went to a movie theater not knowing what we were going to see that is real weird that's like shit they did on seinfeld I think I think I was probably being like a hyperactive asshole, and they're like, let's just let's take them to the movies and shut them up. <laughs> and so, like, I remember we like went, we were like, what's playing? What do you recommend? And I feel like, I what do remember, you recommend? Who, yeah, that's who what my you at, you, that's what my you parents like did. Asking the kid behind the fucking counter. I, I, I wasn't at my parents were, and then and I think I was actually. I remember <laughs> I was pushing for the fast and the furious i remember thinking like let's go see this and everyone there was like this is all you gotta go it's awesome that was what they right that was what the chef recommended at the amc yeah they were like go see it it's awesome and i think my parents probably wanted to see something else but they took me um they don't remember this movie like at all like i think my every time i bring my dad's like is that that vin diesel like my dad doesn't remember movies he just remembers the like certain people in them Um, he'll be like, is that Vin Diesel? I'll be watching some... Ted, Ted Levine vehicle? Yeah, I'll be watching uh, Star is Born. He's like, yeah, is that Brad Cooper? Uh, you know, like... Um, but, so, I guess we should just get it... Uh, well, let's let's get into it. Do you, what's your memory with this movie? Did you see I, it in theaters? I saw it DVD? in the theater, but I saw it... It came out in June, but I saw it, like, right before school started. So I must have seen it late in its run. Yeah. So this was not something I was like opening day. Got to see the Fast and the Furious. I have yeah, no I saw it like I, a few weeks. I saw it like mid July. Way I saw it like right when what would that be eighth grade was starting. I saw wow. it in the theater, which is weird. And I saw it. This is a really weird memory. I saw it with one other guy who I was kind of friends with, and like other people that I was better friends with bailed. So just me and him saw this movie alone <laughs> together, which is a really weird memory. Uh, and you're, are you friends with this guy at all? Still? I haven't seen this guy in so long. Like, we, that, you haven't seen this guy. <laughs> you haven't seen him since the screening. <laughs> yeah, the, no, I've, I've seen him. I got. I think the first one, of the first times I got really drunk was at his house in high school, and I hadn't. At that point, I hadn't seen him probably since the screening. So that was a, a weird thing that happened. I own this on DVD. This is one too. of the the first ones I bought with the Mummy. For the the PlayStation Two DVD player, the Mummy Returns and Jurassic Park. No, I only bought the first one because I didn't like, <clears throat> I didn't love Returns, uh, as as we found out. Yeah. I, you know, I don't know what I liked so much about it at the time, but a lot of it is, you know, besides the music, and the fact that they say the phrase "race war" about a thousand times too much, given additional context in the last twenty years. It's it, it holds up remarkably well. I there's not that much action in this movie. Yeah. Like you said, how much it costs, and like I get it now, thinking okay, that's why there's really two action set pieces in you know like one to two races. But yeah, I something about this movie works. It is yeah. a straight remake of Point Break with cars, right. and for some reason it's. You know the, the the people who they cast and the energy of it is not bad at all. Rob Cohen has since been canceled. Yeah. Since this this movie, he's never made. I would say I don't think he's ever made a really good movie. He's kind of a no. weird. Not director. other than other than this. No, he made um <clears throat> he made Triple X with Vin Diesel. Yeah. That that was that why. Sucking. Yeah, it sucked. I saw it in theaters. I, I I saw it in theaters and I remember nothing. I just remember thinking it sucked. Ramstein's in like the first ten minutes of it, which fits Rob Cohen's vibe. I don't <laughs> yeah, remember, totally. I don't, I don't remember much about it either, other than I, I remember being disappointed by it. But Rob Cohen also directed The Mummy Three, Tomb of the That's Dragon right. Emperor. Yeah, and the, the Skulls, which is not good. Yeah, Paul Walker's in there. But the Skulls is kind of what got this movie together because Neil Moritz produced the Skulls with Paul Walker and Rob Cohen, and they were looking for something to do together. And Neil Moritz fought for Vin Diesel because Vin Diesel hadn't really done anything. He had done Saving Private Ryan, but it was his uh, short I think, film. I think he did Pitch Black before this. Yes, he did do Pitch Black, but I don't. Yeah, he. I think he was shooting Pitch Black when they were pre-produ- They were in pre-production on this movie. Um, 
and he also made a short film called Multifacial that went to I Cannes. Seen it. Saw that, but it didn't, is didn't, so didn't good. see the film. Yeah, it's so good, and he directed it and stars in it. It's it's literally about an eth- ethnically ambiguous actor played by him who has like a day of auditions where he just plays different. It's it's so fucking good. It's really great. Interesting. Um, I don't know that he's a great actor, but I think everyone, including me, just kind of likes him. I, I think he's he's awesome as Caparzo. That's a that's a great small yeah. character. Really good death in a movie filled with good. Oh, death. it's he's so good in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, I love that scene. Um, great, great, great death. But here, that's my just, dad's favorite scene. Works. And yeah, that, that's my dad's favorite scene in Saving Private Ryan. I think is with that Caparzo is, yeah, Caparzo's it. death. Yeah, when he's like, "This is my da- this is for my dad. Give him this letter. It's amazing." Um, I love uh, Adam Goldberg's death, and I won't be talked out of that uh, opinion. Dude, oh, that's um, yeah, that that deathberg that, that death is legend. I said deathberg. That <laughs> that that death <laughs> is legendary. Deathberg. Adam Deathberg. Yeah, dude, it's but terrifying. He, the German, the yeah. Nazis just. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah, it's like holy shit. It's um, good stuff. I it's also love good. when Vin when Vin dies in Sam Raimi and he and he hits the piano on his way down. I thought that's a really just very cool detail. Um, but anyway, go ahead. This movie's interesting. I I, I read that they were trying to get Timothy Oliphant to play. Toretto. Yeah, Toretto. I love Tim Oliphant. I, I kind of don't see it. I, I'm not a huge. I fan love him of too. This franchise i think i've only seen half of the movies if that mm-hmm. and i know i've seen the second and third one and then there's like maybe one or two other ones i've seen mm-hmm. so i'm not i'm not a die hard fast and the furious person mm-hmm. so i don't i don't know how the characters evolve over time or whatever but the vin and paul walker bromance throughout this movie is very good paul yeah. walker also cannot act not an actor at all but that doesn't matter because they're not using him as an actor. They're casting him to be Keanu Reeves from Point Break, and yeah. it's perfect. He is. He's he's great. He, he's he's perfect in, 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 this, this, in yeah. this movie. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck Rob Cohen managed some of the action that he managed here. Other than I did look up the second unit director was the guy who did Braveheart, uh, among other oh, wow. large okay. scale action pieces. Because that the first scene they do the hijack and right. it's a terrible plan that they have. It's a fucking right. awful plan. Very messy. Just it's just such a bad idea, and it works, and it looks cool. And that driving stunt where they drive under the truck is a great stunt. Very good yeah. stunt. And that gets it. you. And that gets you in. And I think oh, at like, the time, yes, I think at the stunt. time, I don't think we had seen that before. Truly, no, like, I don't ever remember seeing that. And they do it again later in the movie. Oh yeah, it's not as good when they go under. They when Letty, well, under. yeah, well, because Letty goes uh, like she just drives one through side it. But the, it, the opening, awesome. when they're with it, it's amazing. It um, looks so good. And I have, like, what, like it's not, I wouldn't think of Rob Cohen as being a guy to pull off some, like, vehicular yeah, action. But he fucking and did. The the second, you know, the big, the bigger heist where everything goes super wrong. It's is, awesome. It's good. It's not, it's, it's, I saw, I read a lot of shit comparing it to the Road Warrior. Let's relax. It's not that good, but it's still pretty no. good. No. But I don't think it's uh, see. I wouldn't even compare it to the Road Warrior because that's just a completely different fucking movie. And like yeah. Mad Max, Road Warrior and Fury Road. For I mean, I'll, and I'll admit those are the only two Mad Max movies I've seen. But like, they both. Th- those are the two best ones. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Those they both literally are action movies where everything is moving. Quite yeah. literally, everything yeah. is moving, and the action is moving the story forward, and vice versa. So I don't think you should even compare it because this is a completely different film. That said, now I can get into my opinion of the movie. I fucking love this movie. I've loved it for years. I, the more I, I honestly, the older I've gotten, the more I love it. I think it is damn near perfect popcorn entertainment. Like, like I, I, I I'm not. Let me, let me you know make sure i clarify what i'm saying i think in terms of a movie that you just want to watch and be sucked in and be entertained for an hour and 40 minutes i really think this is like one of your best bets i think it holds up great i agree i think the relationship between vin diesel and paul walker and this is really good i think that and i think once you start to break it down and i'll i've actually never seen point break but i've heard for years that this is a like a straight re- remake of it pretty this much this is a straight remake of Point Break yeah, Point yeah. Break also rules by the way I hear it's, it's awesome such, such I know I'm so it. excited to see it even though I already know like that don't spoil anything else but no, I already no, know I, that I, there's I like undercover cops and shit I won't spoil anything but I will yeah. say that Catherine Bigelow is, is a wonderful director and yeah she's and amazing beats the tits off of Rob Cohen 
every day of the week. So yeah, it, definitely. Yeah. I agree with that. But I think Rob Cohen does a great job with these set pieces, with the especially with the opening, with the with the scene where everything goes to shit. Um, but also, I think the race sequence race in the sequence beginning is, good. is very is very well done. I think. But I think the biggest thing about this movie that I really gravitate towards is that I think the tone is like I think a, either a miracle or an accident but it fucking works because it's a movie where everybody in it is really really serious but at the same time it doesn't take itself seriously and I don't know how they pulled that off because in later entries I, I personally do enjoy the Fast and the Furious series but I'm not saying later, I don't enjoy it I'm just not I know. it's like you it's haven't seen really as my, my, like I love right. everything I've seen I'm just not like super right into it. The movies are really fun, but in later years, they've gotten more and more ridiculous. And look, they're still fun and they're still enjoyable, but that first one really nailed that tone of, like, again, a lot of self-seriousness in the world, but as a whole, we all knew not to take it that seriously. And on top of it, it is by far the most grounded of all of the entries, and that's another reason why I love it. It just feels like it could fucking happen. It feels like it's a legit story in L.A. where anything... And I just... Like, now they're, like, in F, in F9, apparently they, like, go to space. And it's like, Jesus Christ, that is ridiculous. Doesn't mean it's not going to be fun and enjoyable. But <clears throat> but that's another thing I love about the first one, is that it feels like a grounded cop story. I Obviously, I love Ted Levine. I love that he's in it. Um, he, he doesn't return, though, right? <clears throat> no, he's only in this there. one. Um, and I actually will say that the relationship between Paul Walker and Tyrese in Too Fast, Too Furious, which I also watched, is also yeah. great. Um, they have great chemistry, and they're hilarious. They're, that one is a lot funnier yeah. than this yeah. one. But it's but it's, but it's it's they're different. But I, I, call me an idiot, whatever you want. I like Too Fast, Too Furious. It's a fun movie. I, 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 um, like I said, I don't think there's one of them I don't like. Yeah, they're fun. They're great. They're really fun movies. But, like, I think that the first one, it's just... I don't know. I guess I guess there's a part of me that's like this is exactly what the show's about and nostalgia. I am genuinely transported back to a simpler time when I watch it. And it's, a lot of it's the filmmaking. I mean, it's not Yeah. And the soundtrack CGI with fucking heavy. the soundtrack uh, for fucking sure. That band Saliva. Oh god. Remember when he's like what, when he's on the cute. when he's on the PCH and they're like smoke him. When, that, uh, uh, that is so funny. The guy's like, it's hilarious. Ferrari. And you know who that is? That's Neil Moritz, the producer. I know. I looked that up. A- and, he said, and he said he desperately didn't want to do it, but no one else would, so he did it. And he said his friends still make fun of him today about oh, he, it. <laughs> I mean, he's terrible. That is a ridiculous yeah. performance. It's perfect. Yeah, he's, he's did, awful. Do you see what restaurant they end up at? Oh, yeah, Neptune's Net. Which Old I, Neptune's Net. I have never been to. I have driven by it. I've been. I want to go. I've actually heard from a lot of locals and people that it's kind of overrated. It's just like the the location's great and yeah. um and it's kind of like a, a staple. But there's been like I went to we went to Broad Street Oyster Company in, in Malibu, like just up the street, and it was phenomenal. Awesome. Um, so I've yet to try Neptune's Net. I, I won't. I, I'll save my opinion until I try it. But that's what I've heard. The- if you look at this movie versus Doctor Doolittle two, every all the all the choices, all the production in the Fast and Furious is so much better. Than so much better. Thing about no wonder it fucking two. won the box office. Like it, it, it I, I mean, I don't know. It's still kind of a surprise because Doctor Doolittle, like you said, it was a hit. It's a well known entity. Right, got right. Eddie Murphy, that, that right. kind of peak Eddie Murphy <clears throat> zone, like before he did Norbit, where he really couldn't do any wrong. Right, and. I don't know this this I think this is a much better movie when watched side by side it's like right. not even fucking close but you'd have no way of knowing that in 2001 it right. just has an amazing title and a dude named Vin Diesel and some fast cars right uh, you know it, it all I, comes together and it, it actually is more of a hangout movie than anything I mean the the budget well there's a plot a driving bit. it forward there, there's and there's a, plot, a ticking there's a clock for sure 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 well they do they, they have to come back yeah, and he's like, you got 48 hours. You reestablish yeah. the ticking clock right. because things get a little too loose in the, in the plot of the movie. Right. But it it is, you know, people hanging out, dating, trying to fuck, fucking, yeah. 
big and fast cars, saying yeah. ridiculous but, shit. But again, like it's it's I think it's more intricate than people give it credit for. It's like even in the opening when the guy's like just packed up a money load, it's headed your way, look for the Rogers on the side of the truck, That's don't forget about my share of the again. deal. Yeah. No, I know, but like but that kind of gets you in, like, okay, this is how they're pulling these things off. This is how they know where to find these trucks because they have someone on the inside who's giving them information and then you hear like brian's at this at the 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 grocery store and he's like you've been coming here for three days it's like okay yeah he's on assignment he's been doing how long has he been undercover how how, you know it's like it's it's just it's intricate and it's detailed and i really appreciate that about it and on top of it at the end when he lets him go it's heartfelt and you're like oh wow like he he likes this guy like he of fucking course. he like he he can't just fucking turn him in he 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 lets him go because he like this was his family like he didn't have any other family and but they don't I, get into that and the only person who says it I know. in this movie is Ted Levine which is it's interesting right. that they built so much on that in the right because now that's what the whole series is about yeah which is which is very smart because it it obviously becomes much more overt later but it's there right. in this one it's there right. it it is authentic it doesn't seem cheesy and it's that whoever decided hey let's run with that theme for the rest of this series genius fucking genius like it it, it melds everything together that's wonderful and these movies are four quadrant hits they play to everybody and let's talk about the diversity in the cast this was before any of this was you know a thing that the film industry was taking rightly so was taking seriously and this movie ha- it's it's like I, the I actually cast, the cast is so diverse that it actually seems weird that Paul Walker is infiltrating the group. Right. It, it seems weird that they didn't cast a person of color for right. Paul Walker's role. I, I, I know it, what you it's mean. It's almost odd that like why is this white bread? Why is white the white guy? man right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's what's interesting about it is like I mean I I think I still think Paul Walker is like perfect in the role I think but he's I, perfect too. I it's hear what you mean I see what well you mean they, they build a diverse cast out right it's like I, it's actually I, odd that he is able to successfully get in with this crew of people who are very different from him right except for their shared love of, of cars right but I think like you know I think another thing is uh I don't I this is gonna sound a little weird maybe and I, I there's no way to really know but like maybe in my subconscious when I was young like it was implanted in me about like you know like diversity in film and it's like this was my, this might have been like the first movie that i saw a big movie that like looked like the real world you know with like different colored people because i you know grew up in a very like white town and so this was just like an example of like what the world really looks like and again i was 12 so i think that was really the first time that i witnessed that and i'm very grateful for that and i think you know again to go back to some of the sillier moments like you know, like when he's like, "You break her heart, I'll break your neck." <laughs> like Great, they're just yeah, good hilarious Delivered lines. Deadpan, just perfect. I mean, at one point, Jordan again Brewster des- he describes Vin Diesel's character as he's like gravity, and that is a ridiculous line. It's I mean, ridiculous. Even the, even the "Live my life a quarter mile at a time" speech is like so it's dumb. Ins- it's, it's absurd. I it. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's I, it's, but I love it. Right, exactly. It. It's so, it's so silly, but I love it. It's like. Dude, Zoe. So Zoe had never seen it, so she watched it with me. How, how did she they, feel about it? She had liked she it. Ever seen any of them? In this, movie? no, she hadn't seen any of them, and she genuinely liked it. But she said the same thing. She was like, "It's very silly, but it's but it's good." Like I, I feel like similar to us. She's kind of like, "How do they pull that off?" Because like it's definitely silly and stupid in a lot of ways, but it's like, but it still is really good and sincere, and and I appreciate it. But like the other morning, she just texted me out of the blue. I live my life a quarter mile at a time, <laughs> just like, which is just hilarious, and it's like. Dude, I remember in high school, there was this uh, this kid who was like um, pissing off. Like he he was like you know he he was like not fighting but like arguing with someone about something and was like yeah whatever you narc you, you narked on you know whoever and the kid that who you know the kid who said, uh, the kid who got called a narc got right in his face was like i never knocked on nobody and he was directly quoting <laughs> vin diesel to rick yoon as johnny tran in this yeah. movie and again like talk about quotes like i swear like every scene has a quote like i i can't tell you how many times i also say ted kiss my shoes and like <laughs> and then uh 
<laughs> what, you want a 40 weight here? Yeah, yeah, you want a 40 weight, 30 weight? Uh, 30 weight sounds nice. Yeah, and then, like, oh, my God. And, uh, I don't know, they're just classic. You want time, find a magazine. We don't have time. And then uh, Ted All Levine right. with the classic. So. Let's see if I can do my Ted Levine. It's Toretto, Brian. It always has been. I can't really more, do it. More but, register. More register. Yeah. A lot more register in your voice for Levine. Like, how, like it, lower? Like you need to get into it. Yeah. It's Toretto O'Brien. Yeah, it always Toretto, has been. It's Toretto O'Brien. It all, I can't do it. But Was he a great big fat Vin? <laughs> oh, wait. Was he a great big fat person? But yeah, see, yeah. You, have to, um, you have to... It's get Toretto O'Brien. O'Brien. It always has it's, been. It's Toretto O'Brien. <laughs> um, and also, when like when he's... Uh, yeah, I'd be getting off to her surveillance photos too, buddy. And then Ted Levine grabs him and goes... And he goes, knock it off. And then he goes, you going native on me, Brian? Um, but like... That's- Again. That's, uh, that that's okay. So like behind the curtain shit, hilarious that they they he the first fucking like Ted Levine line is him explaining how this house was built for Elizabeth Taylor in the fifties. I know. H- hilarious. Also, one of those things where you can tell they had that house and Ted Levine for about two and a half days and had to film all. And had, had to film everything. <laughs> yep. All of them. Yeah. Right and then Paul Walker's line. <laughs> he never See, shows up the- anywhere else. I know, and then Paul Walker's line: "Even the cops are Hollywood and Hollywood." But you know what's so great about that? And I and I and I I have to acknowledge Zoe's reaction to it. And it's good filmmaking, truly good writing and good directing, and I guess performances too. But like in that moment, Zoe was like genuinely surprised. Like, oh wait, he's a cop. And it's like it 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 it's, like I'm glad she had that because I it seems very obvious. It it seems a little obvious, but I think you could argue that it's I'm a little obvious. I'm glad. I think it, I think you could argue that it's a little obvious when he's driving away with Vin Diesel and he's like, "You're driving like you've done this before," and like all this stuff. And um, every time Vin Diesel drives with him, he is holding on to for, for fucking dear life, dear life with yeah. the handle. Like every time Vin's in the car with him, he's like, "Oh, <laughs> like you kind of suck." It's true. At this. I know it's true. Um, but I love the way that they were how he's just driving down the road. He gets pulled over and then he just gets in. And, like, they're definitely, like, and the, the way that the camera pushes into Ted Levine, it's like, okay, this character is important. We don't know why yet. And then when they're, like, the long lens of he's like, oh, can you get these co- these these off me? You put them on too tight or whatever. I just, I, it's just, it kind of all happens naturally and slowly of, yeah. like, oh, shit, he's a fucking, he's a cop. Um, But, yeah, I love this movie. I think it's, I, I honestly, like, laugh all you want. It's a four-star film to me. I I really, I love it. I really do. I think that it's, it is a great summer popcorn movie. And again, I think as popcorn entertainment, it's, it's damn near perfect. I I would say that it's like, you know, for, for depending on what generation you grew up in, this is one of the, not the, but one of those movies for our generation. That is a, just a great popcorn movie that holds up today. I can see Um, that. I think, I think you're, you're correct about that. Uh, uh, who is your it. favorite side character? Actually, I'm glad you brought this up. Uh, I would say, I mean, I think Vince is pretty funny. How is that? Like, uh, yeah. Okay. So I think, but let me, let me Vince. Yeah. I'll give you my answer, which is clearly Vince. Okay. Back okay. It's, <laughs> it, it is Vince, but there's a, there's a, there's a, a close second and I'll get to him in a moment. But Vince is, I think Vince is hilarious when he's, uh, just how, how angry he gets and how he's like so he's angry. just he's so hilarious and 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 Orin and I my old roommate Orin and I used to quote um because the restaurant Cha 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 which is unfortunately now closed I guess there's a different location in L A but the original where they shot that scene I've been to a few times and Orin was like we got to try this place and it's called and I and I was like wait is that in the Fast Furious and every time we brought it up we're like you want to go with the little candles Cha 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 <laughs> and we always would quote that. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I love Vince, but I gotta say, I really like Jesse too. And I, I'm okay with Jesse. <sighs> I get it. I, I he's not, I, he's not like maybe the most like, you're like, Oh, you, it's, he's not like someone who you're like, Oh, I love Jesse. But one thing that I really appreciated and it didn't hit me till I was watching it this time, even though his lines, his following lines are very cheesy. Um, but when he's showing Paul Walker, the, the cars make the making and the designs that he's doing. And he says, you should be going to MIT. And I got attention and he goes, Oh, ADD. I, you know, I was diagnosed with ADD when I was like nine. So this was like three years after I was diagnosed with it. And again, I didn't realize this at the time, but like, I thought it was a very like honest depiction of it. And it, 
didn't make a joke of it. It wasn't no. it wasn't cartoonish. It wasn't on the nose. It wasn't disrespectful. Um, and it, again, it didn't hit me till I was watching it this time. But I was like, wow, that was really well done. Like, and as someone with ADD who has like been made fun of for having it before, and has who had, who grew up feeling kind of different with it, like I did like it did help me. I mean, again, I'm I'm fine now, but like I could imagine feeling seen when i saw that you know what i mean like sure. I, instead of tensing up and being like oh no what are people gonna think it's like oh yeah this guy has it and look at the cool shit he's doing yeah, but he's again popping floppy disks in the computer and everything right but but i also and i've quoted this before and i think it's funny when he says there's just something about engines that calms me down that, that is a weird line <laughs> it's a weird and hilarious line but i definitely credit the filmmakers not even sure if they were aware but like they they didn't make a joke of it and i i thought that was really cool that's another that's just another reason why i love the movie yeah it 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 builds the island of misfit toys nature of the of yes the team, yes which i think is good but yeah vince i i mean yeah he's hilarious vince he's he's super angry he only wears mesh shirts oh yeah he remembers third grade and he drinks beer super weird I and I, I like, like rewound it. <laughs> yeah, like, when they're at the table. Yeah, when they're at the yeah, table. Yeah. And I also one of the biggest quotes, one of the biggest Vince quote that we use is when he comes, when he when he leaves, and they, and then, uh, two of them when he goes, looks like you got all the help you need, brother. Oh, that, then, that line reading is ridiculous. Amazing. It's and then when he awesome. and then when he comes back and and uh, the guy says, I thought you weren't hungry, pumpkin, and he goes, gotta eat. Yeah. <laughs> I I say that all the time. I. I misremembered there. Vin Diesel has one of the worst line readings of, of history, but it, it's, it's, I thought it was in this movie. I believe it's in fast five. Cause I, I looked it up where he, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but he, I have, he, I've seen all of them. Uh, it's the line actually, actually I've, I haven't seen, to- I haven't seen Tokyo drift, but I've seen it. It's all not great, uh, but I do like it. But, oh, there's a line when Vin Diesel tries to say, I remember everything about my father. And w- what he says is I'm a man of my father. And it's it is awesome. Like I've watched the loop of that a lot because it's so funny. I, I was disappointed that it wasn't this one. They, they I gotta check that. I gotta watch that one. Oh, it's um, it's special. Um, yeah, I haven't seen just, Fast Five since I saw it in theaters, but I loved it. You I know, believe it's, it's in that one. He just he just opens his mouth and all the syllables come out at once, and it's fucking perfect. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I wish that was this one. Um, all right, yeah, this so this movie it's good. good. I, I agree with you. Yeah, I I like it. I, it's. I wish it had more, I guess, style than Rob Cohen is capable of bringing. This kind I of movie because it just I would feels agree like with that. Just I, below, like, like hitting that gear that certain movies hit as like a, I guess, a yeah, I, nerd where you're like, yes, this rules. Like it's a little yeah. too pedestrian in, in its direction. And that is really my only real complaint. I hate the music, but it's fine. It's a product. Of I think that's fair music. about the direction. I think. I, that, that's why I think like it's definitely. That's why I said it's one of and not like the because. But it's a it's a, it is a, a populist. Oh, it's like, and it's it, great. It, it's not like stuff like this tends to be better received yeah. than I don't know for the time two thousand one. Uh, we could say Memento for a very stylized movie, right? This, right. this would be this is but not like that. when you watch Memento, you get a sense like I am experiencing a, a filmmaker with an interesting voice and an interesting yeah. point of you, view. You do not get that, and you don't get you that. Just from, get, you just yeah. get what's on screen, but I think what's on screen. Well, what's on screen is great. I agree, and it's you can't. I, I wouldn't necessarily fault the movie for that, and I wouldn't say like, well, Memento's better because of that. I would just say that there's a different thing, and both yeah. can coexist, and both can be great. I, um truly my, and, I, and look as as hard as fucking and i know as as hard as fucking filmmaking is like to be able to have someone say like oh that feels like a a an andrew carter moment or like or my partner khalil Muscati moment it's like that's a huge compliment yeah. and that doesn't always happen and you can you can still put all your effort and and your love and your heart into it and it's and sometimes it still doesn't and sometimes it doesn't happen and like that's okay it doesn't mean you made something bad i would just say that when it does happen it's very very special um and my final thought is i would have been a perfect extra in this movie in 2001 i I could have worn big clothing and done a lot of just like rubbing my jaw yeah there's a lot of dudes in the back oh yeah 
Yeah, at the, like at the race of, in the circles. Jostle. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of, especially like at the race war where they're like, ooh, yeah. just like I know. A, lot of, a lot of just moving back and forth and, and like touching when your Vin, jawline. Yeah, when Vin Diesel goes like, almost had me, and that one guy's like, oh, I, I, yeah, like, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I know. He's like super <laughs> animated. And then Ja Rule, when he's like, Monica, and she's like, what's your problem? You didn't win. And he's like, fuck That's, you, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah. she drops an N-bomb She does him, drop the N-bomb. amazing for yeah. a PG-13 movie. I couldn't and believe then, it. And he yells. I remembered him yelling Monica because it's, it's classic. Perfect. It's, yeah, it's perfect classic. acting. I didn't remember him yelling Menage, which is oh, let's go way, Menage. Way yeah, no, Amazing. when he loses, he yells Monica Menage. He does. Oh my say god! I only awesome. remember him saying "Let's go Menage," <laughs> which is hilarious. And he uh, he blew it to be in this in the second one. That's why they. I think gave it to Tyrese or they changed characters oh, really? or something. Yeah. Um, I don't remember quite what happened, but he just like, uh, he just, I don't know, like w- w- was a little, st- I-, I guess he like couldn't get out of something or whatever, uh, that, but he's that hilarious. Society's loss. Yeah. yeah he is hilarious in this. Also, uh, no, no Guglielmi. I for- can't pronounce the last name Guglielmi, but who plays Hector classic. Great. Love that Hector. Guy shows up fucking everywhere. I love yeah. He's him. awesome. Um, but the last thing I'll say about it is that, for people listening, they might be wondering, of course, Fast and Furious is still good. Why would you do something on it? It got bad, or, not bad, but it, like it got Mixed. like a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes or something. It didn't get like universally great reviews. It was a big no, hit with no, audiences. No, no, no. So I just, I always just, the disconnect is so interesting to me when, when that happens. And this, I think, is a great example of critics just not being able to like take their fucking heads out of their asses and just have a good time. Well... And I, I, we always say this: if there's an Ebert review for something, you should read it because he's he's usually he usually for his time was usually able to get into the vibe of a movie, yeah, very easily. And he was able to do that. With and this he did one. that with this, right? Yeah, he gave it three stars. And he usually calls stuff out like, "Hey, this is as exactly what you think it's going to be. This it delivers. It's a good time. It, it's not that smart. It's actually super dumb, but you're going to enjoy this, right?" Yeah. And I get That's the why negative was criticism great. on it. Yeah, I, I, I can. I read some stuff and I was like, okay, I, I, I get, get it. it if too. you're really bothered by a dumb movie, maybe you'll be upset here. But yeah, I, don't I get know. it too. But I love. I, it. I get excited by dumb movies. I, I, I'll never understand people who get all haughty, um, especially yeah. something like this that's clearly not trying to be like a fucking Bergman picture. Like this just not. <laughs> right. This isn't going to be that. So exactly. You know, accept it for what it is. Exactly. Um, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, find us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, subscribe to us. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Still Good Show. Um, leave us a five star review. Uh, subs- and again, remember to subscribe. Uh, we will see you next time for more summer movie counter programming fun. Um, or we'll change it up. You never know. Um, and for Bear Kennedy, I'm Andrew Carter. Yeah.